Hey, welcome back friends. Fun video today. So Page, Arizona, Zion National Park, Bryce Canyon National Park, uh, Grand Canyon, Sedona, Arizona. We just did all of that in eight days. And um, it was a little bit exhausting, but it was absolutely wonderful. Kind of a bucket list trip for us. Definitely, yeah. I call that yeah. our summer adventure. I don't know that right. we uh, relax too much, but we had a great time. We and did. It was we an did. adventure. And so we that we, we usually take a beach trip during the summer. We we, did, we didn't take the RV, so we just don't have time for that. We're weekenders, and I know a lot of you are interested in a trip like this where you don't have time to take your RV out west, but you still want to do it. You know, a lot of people say, "Hey, we can't wait till we retire." Well, we're not gonna bank on us ever retiring. So um, I hope we do. That'd be great. Yeah, I'd but love to. we want to go now while the kids are young and we have enough energy to do it, <laughs> right? So uh, so today's video, this is going to be a two-part series and we're just going to talk to you guys as if you were family and um, and you were interested in this kind of trip. So we'll be throwing some video up there to give you some visuals, uh, but we're just going to chit chat about the trip. That's all we're going to do. And we're going to do uh, three or four stops in this video. And then we'll have another video coming up right behind this one and where we'll talk about the remainder of the trip. Uh, yeah, you ready? Ready to Let's chat about it? it? Yeah. All right. Sounds great. Hope you stick around. Today's video is brought to you by RVmattress.com, a Brooklyn bedding brand. So our family has enjoyed RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding's mattresses for over a year now. We love them and we're confident you will as well. This particular model is called the Dream Foam Essential, which just won Good Housekeeping's 2023 Family Travel Award for having a big variety of sizes without sacrificing comfort, making it the perfect mattress on the road. With your RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding, you get a 120 night sleep trial and a 10 year warranty. Each mattress is made right here in the good old USA and ships from their warehouse in Arizona. For our family, the RV is our place to recharge for the next day. So a comfortable night's rest is important, not just for mom and dad, but for the kids too. Thank you RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding for sponsoring today's video. Go visit rvmattress.com wondering and use code wondering to get 20% off your new RV mattress. Hey friends, just going to tap the brakes right quick and let you know that our code WONDERING now saves you 25%. So thank you RVMattress.com for a little bit of extra savings. Now let's hop back into today's video. Okay, like I mentioned, this is just going to be a conversation. We have our notes, the points that we want to hit, but we may talk over each other a little bit. Well, you know, we're just going <laughs> to chat with you guys. That's all that we don't, we have not rehearsed this. We just have a list of things we want to make sure. It's a good list. We want to make sure that we don't miss. We want to make sure you guys know about these things. And uh, I'll start sure. with letting you guys know. So we okay. flew from Atlanta to Phoenix. Um, it was an early flight. And then from Phoenix, we drove to Page, Arizona. So we had about a four-hour flight into Phoenix and then about a four-and-a-half-hour drive up to Page, which is right on the border of Utah and Arizona. And at Page, we had an Airbnb. Yeah. Right? We were um, upstairs. We were upstairs in an Airbnb. Mm -hmm. the, the owners lived downstairs, and we were upstairs. Uh, the kids actually did a good job, not Mostly jumping around job. too much. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, it was really good. But the interesting thing about this is the Airbnb we stayed at, and this will all be listed in the description box, was called Page Adventure House. Uh, we, not, they, don't, they didn't pay for a spot, no, nothing right. like that. We just this is, uh, this is all organic. Uh, Page Adventure House, and the cool thing about Page Adventure House is the owners also were kayak guides. Yes. On Lake Powell. You want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. So we got to Paige, um, settled in, kind of drove around, got familiar with the area, drove over to Glen Canyon Dam, had dinner. We did. Right that night at the birdhouse. Mm -hmm. So the next morning we got up and we got at 8 o'clock? Yes. Did that time? Yes. Um, at the um, Lake Powell Adventure Company and we did the Antelope Island kayak and hike yes. tour. So Danny... One of the, the whose house we were staying in, right? He um, guided us on our tour, and we had the best time. I still think that ranked at the top of this whole trip for, for us. Sure. Like one of the, our favorite things we did. Uh, the kids did great. Townley had her own kayak. I had my own kayak, and then Corey and Beckett were in one together. Yes, and there were the lead sled. Yeah. <laughs> But there were a few others in our group that mm -hmm. we got to meet uh, during the tour, and we had a great time. The weather was perfect. We did. Um, it was just warm enough where you'd kind of want to splash some water on you and cool off, but we um, were very comfortable the whole yeah. time, and we got to see some beautiful sights. The lake is coming up really fast, so that was neat to learn about. Yeah, the lake is coming. You guys know about the snow, snow melt out there right now. It's coming up a foot a day. But we still found some 
good spots to take in the sights. And uh, Danny took us on this really cool tour to the top of um, this Antelope really Island. great lookout on Antelope Island. Mm -hmm. And then we got to jump off this cliff. Kids love yeah. that. Uh, we even found a Beckett-sized cliff you could jump off of into the water. And we just had a great time. And the water was very refreshing. Uh, I love the water. She <laughs> she likes bath water. I like crystal water. I like water. warmer lake water, but yeah. I did jump in. Uh, I just you didn't did. swim around for a long time. You did do the rock jump. That was a sure. lot of fun. You, you, so I'm really glad we did that. And it then, was great. And let me, let me yeah, right quick, let me give you a call out to Corey and Jesse. You guys, a lot of you guys, probably most of you, follow Corey and Jesse over at Finding Our Someday. They were the ones that recommended Paige because mm -hmm. we, yeah. we had spoke to them and said, I, I called Corey and I said, hey, um, we're headed out to Utah and Arizona. We'd love some suggestions. And he said, well, don't miss Paige, Arizona. That's one of their favorites. So thank you, Corey and Jesse, for yes. that recommendation. It was a great one. The kayak tour was awesome. Yeah, we loved yeah. it. Um, and then we came back that after, right after the tour, kind of freshened yes. up, put on some nice dry clothes and went out uh, to go to the visitor center at Glen Canyon Dam. Yes. And then we also drove over to Horseshoe Bend and saw that. And I have to tell you, I expected it to be really crowded and kind of, I don't know, just what you see in pictures. But it was way more amazing. And you're going to hear us say that plenty, I guess, during right. the video. It, it was really beautiful. And while there were people there, it wasn't crazy. And we no. didn't go at sunrise. We didn't go at sunset. And maybe that helped. We kind of went in the middle of the afternoon. Um, but it was great. Well, I think part of this trip, too, now you guys notice we're talking about end of May here. Most of the country wasn't out of school yet. Our kids are living in a district where we got us out of school on May 19th. Right. And that was very purposeful on our part is to go before our kids got out of school. So if you have a chance, if you don't have kids in school, um, maybe that's an option is to go while everyone's in school. I do think that helped tremendously. It it's, did. And, and everything out there is, you, and you'll hear us say this just like she just mentioned, you can't catch it on camera, really. You, you, it's just so massive and majestic, but uh, but you try, but it's crazy. Yeah. Right, yeah. And to your point about the kids, we didn't see a lot of kids, so it told us that we got there before right. a lot of summer vacations, family summer vacations started with a lot of kids. Right. So. Now, let's not skip those restaurants. So okay, yep. the first night we were at Page, and this is where hopefully this video will come in handy, little tidbits like this. Mm -hmm. uh, we ate at Birdhouse Restaurant. She just mentioned it. Now, we're from Georgia. We we know about fried chicken. We know our chicken. <laughs> and uh, Birdhouse is really, really good. Yes. And uh, actually, Danny and Jora were going to suggest that we go to Birdhouse, but we already went because yep. we found it on Yelp. I guess you found it on Yelp. Yeah, or, usually yeah. I like to check Yelp and just check reviews and scope the pictures of the food to see. Right. Uh, Birdhouse is somewhere. definitely a recommendation. So mm -hmm. And then at the, the day of the kayak tour and the visitor center at Glen Canyon Dam, um, we ate at El Tapatio Mexican. Yep, for right? lunch. Mm -hmm. uh, it was pretty good. So I put seven out of ten here, but you order less than you think you'll need because the portions are massive, and, well, and that's it was enough for two. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, Most and dishes. and um, and the prices are they look outrageous, but in our experience, those couple of places in Page, you do get a lot for your money. Like obviously, three chicken fingers for sixteen dollars is a lot of money, but those chicken fingers were, were almost massive. chicken breasts. Yeah, I mean, they were, they were huge. Yeah. And so when it come out, we're like, oh, that's why it's $16, because we were kind of like, oh, gosh, that's expensive. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so Birdhouse was really good. El Tapatio, it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Just make sure to uh, watch your portions. Get half of what you think you need. Yeah, or yeah. check out some photos like I did. I mean, I should have studied them a little better. Right. Because when I was walking by a table, I'm like, oh, my gosh, that plate is huge. So. Right, right. And then um, the next day, I guess it was. It was that evening. It was that evening. Yeah. We ate at Big John's Texas Barbecue, and, you know, we're barbecue snobs, I would say. I mean, we've had it all. It's pretty good. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. I put again, I put 7 out of 10, so I would recommend it. I just wouldn't, I mean, you're not going to get your socks knocked off, but uh, but it's good. I mean, I, you're not going to be disappointed either. And then um, you already mentioned Horseshoe Bend. we mm -hmm. got to go through yeah. the notes. Horseshoe Bend is so much, in my opinion, maybe you'll agree, so much bigger in real life. Yeah, yeah, I think I, you know, I think you have in your head right. all the photos you see on Instagram, but it was way more than that. It was. And I think Horseshoe Bend's like the quintessential horse, uh, Instagram post. I guess, yeah. You know? <laughs> and you guys love it. It's got like more likes than anything. So, yeah, yeah it was. it's beautiful. It's stunning. The river is up right now yeah, um, because really of the snow melt. So, yeah, it was really, really good. And then, and then go let's, ahead. Let's talk about the Page Room yes, Trail. Yes, that so was great. We, we told you we stayed in the Adventure House, and mm -hmm. the location is unbeatable. So it backs up their backyard is a golf course, one of the holes on this golf course in Page. And just past that, 
there's the page room trail. So right. you kind of have to, you know, um, find your way down there. There's a little path close to where we were. So the city of Page sits up on this mesa or plateau. Right. So, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, I mean, you can that hike around that. But we right. were able to kind of go down to the, um, I don't know, just the rocks. Red rocks. Red rocks there mm -hmm. and take some pictures, walk around, look for lost golf balls. Yeah, <laughs> pretty cactuses. I mean, yeah, I interesting mean, formations down there, just like a lot swirls, of that area. Yeah, yeah, it was just really beautiful. So we spent two evenings just doing that but i think if we had more time we probably would hike more of that page room trail because it was yes. so pretty it was it was it was awesome and like i said that house was right on the basically the trailhead yeah one of okay. the trailheads so yeah page rim trail is definitely a recommendation um i think that kind of wraps up page. i think that kind of wraps yeah. up page yeah I, I think so too so uh definitely if you can kayak like powell awesome Glen canyon dam is is obvious that's a must it's actually a it's only 16 feet shorter than Hooper Dam, but it's 90 feet wider. So chew on that a minute. That's, it's, a, it's huge. And then, um, let's see, Horseshoe Bend, of course, and then the Page Room Show. Yeah, so we leave Page, and we're headed to Zion. That's right. Yep. So we head out the next morning after our two-night stay in Page. Yes. And we were looking for just little stops along the way, so I'm kind of looking at Google, Google Maps before we leave, and it highlighted a few different or tagged a few different um stops to consider so we knew toadstools was going to be on the way and it was still pretty decently early in the morning because we were trying to get to Canab for a tour of peekaboo yes. canyon at 11 yeah we'll talk about that in a second yep. yep so anyway on the way we left out pretty early like i said so we stopped at the toadstools and that was a really easy little hike i think we were the only ones there I think we were so there too. so early. Um, yeah. Really, and you're seeing pictures right now. It's... Yeah, really cool. I'm so glad we stopped. The kids loved it. We really were pleasantly surprised at right. how neat it was. Um, and like it's I just said, so fascinating easy hike. How, it's great for kids. How nature can form that. Yeah. You guys are seeing pictures. I mean, it's just uh, uh, you know, it's wind and water, of course. But uh, yeah, so interesting. And, and on that note, we had. We did have something scheduled in Kanab. We had the Peekaboo Canyon, Slot Canyon Tour. We'll talk about that in a second. But on that note, when you're planning this, understand that Arizona does not observe daylight savings. Indian reservations do, and Utah does. So it's kind of screwy. Like, if you want to make sure to not screw up with that, because, you know, we're leaving at a certain time in Arizona, and even though it's the same time zone, it's an hour ahead in Utah. And sometimes even when you're in Arizona on an Indian reservation, it's also an hour ahead. So it can get really confusing. So your best bet is just to punch in your phone Phoenix time and Salt Lake time, and that should help. Yeah, I did yeah. that. I went to my world clock on my iPhone and set Phoenix time, set Salt Lake City time, and then I, of course, kept Atlanta time for reference. Right, for reference. Um, right. And that helped me. I referred to that a number of times during the week. So, um yeah, helpful tip on the time yes. changes. Um, all right, you want to talk about Coral Cliffs? Yeah, so Toast the next day, we after Toadstools, we left Page. We stopped at Toadstools because we had some time. And I'd say Toadstools, an hour is plenty of time there. Oh, think? yeah, I don't need nothing yeah. to worry about I mean, that's that it. I mean, you get back there in 15 minutes. You spend mm -hmm. 15, 20 minutes back there taking pictures and exploring a little mm -hmm. bit. And then 15, yeah, even less than an hour maybe. Yeah. And then, uh, But the reason we were headed that way, we stopped in Kanab. And we used Coral Cliff Tours. Actually, this was a recommendation from your mom. Yeah, family friend yep. of, of my parents. Um, yep. And Kenny from Coral Cliffs Tours. And we did Peekaboo Canyon. So Peekaboo Canyon is kind of like the less busy version of Antelope Canyon. And, uh, and it was great. And Kenny was a local. He had grown up there. I think he was in his mid-50s. And he had some stories, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, he it was, was so entertaining. The nicest yes. guy. And we enjoyed our time with him. He, Actually, um, Funny, yeah, he, he taught us a lot. So, he did. Yeah, showed so us some as treasures. we're in Peekaboo Canyon, um, Townley actually found some fossilized coral. Because if you if you don't if you know what the Grand Staircase is, it used to be the bottom of the ocean, and so it's been raised three thousand feet through tectonic plates and all that good stuff. But so Townley actually found some fossilized coral, and I don't know if you can see this or not, a fossilized. Seashell. Yeah, so that's it. So even Kenny was impressed. Yeah, he, he thought that was cool. He's he, like, wow, good for you. found it and showed him. And he's like, yeah. you found the fossil. So, right. yeah, that was really exciting. Uh, she had a good eye. And she, yeah. I think the kids really enjoyed the Slot Canyon tour. It, it was the really Peekaboo cool. Canyon. So Peekaboo yeah. is a little bit tighter than Antelope Canyon. And you still get the same swirls. You still get the mm -hmm. same 
great pictures. You're seeing some of them or you've already seen some of them already, but uh, it's a lot less crowded. And uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend Coral Cliffs Tours. And if you can get Kenny, that'd be great. And then also Peekaboo Canyon. Yeah. And there's a little, remember fun. we came out and there's a little hoodoo around the corner. Yeah. 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 So yeah, like, the Peekaboo Canyon apparently is, apparently there's another slot canyon kind of that forks off of it. And depending on, you know, tens or 40, 50, 60 years, it switches canyons where the water mm. rushes. Yeah. It's, it's it, it very cool. interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. So we enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Allen, for the recommendation. Right. We enjoyed it. And then from there, Kenny actually, I think he actually did this as extra credit. Because oh, we were yeah. we were the last tour of the day, I think so. uh, for him, and um, so Kenny, thank you for that. If you're if you're watching this, you're probably not. But um, then he took us to Hidden Lake, mm -hmm. and Hidden Lake was really cool. It's very interesting. Uh, he talked about how he used to play there as a kid, and um, how it looked like a crocodile with teeth on each side, mm -hmm. and the water was always like sixty five degrees, it even was when cold it was in hot. The cave. It, yeah, it was really crazy, mm -hmm. and it was like. It's like 30 feet deep. And anyway, he had some great, great stories about all of that. And then even as, as we're riding out there, um, he had some stories about that area and all of that good stuff. And then after we left Hidden Lake, we saw a rattlesnake. We did. And that we was got to see a, really cool. a basin rattler. So We were in the Jeep, and he stopped, and we rolled down the window, and we got to watch it. Um, and I, I don't love snakes, but I love to be able to identify snakes because I don't right. want to be scared of them. And that was one that I didn't know what it was because it doesn't live here in Georgia. So we learned it was a, we think, a great basin yes. rattlesnake. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really in a run-in with wildlife. Yeah, at least you don't we see were rattlesnakes no. terribly often. So. Um, and then after that, we went, went to back Kanab, into Kanab. Went back into Kanab and ate. You know, this was funny because normally we follow Yelp recommendations. And this restaurant didn't have the greatest recommendations but I wanted to give it a shot anyway because it just looked interesting, and it was really good. It was. We were pleasantly surprised. So we are here to support uh, Iron Horse Restaurant in Kanab. Yeah. Our food was really good there. I don't care what Yelp says. <laughs> the food was good. I'm a chili connoisseur. Like, I'm a chili snob, yeah. and um, the chili, chili was great. Yeah. It had elk chili. So good. And then the kids' stuff, they loved theirs. Yeah, everybody loved their meal. Yeah. And we were sitting outside, and a storm came up. It was I don't know, pea sized hail. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. They were great. They moved everyone inside. No questions asked. They were, they were very accommodating. Right. And um, yeah, we had a great lunch. Yeah, but so. don't listen to Yelp about that one. Normally. We're going to go give them a, yeah. a, a four stars. Did we stars. give them one? I'm okay. not yet, but we're going to. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so after Kanab, we're on our way to Zion. And if you watched our little, my little preview video, uh, I had mentioned that we were staying at the Bumblebee oh, Inn. Very. Bumbleberry, yeah, yeah, Bumbleberry, sorry. Bumbleberry Inn, in, uh, right there in Springdale, and we were hoping to get a cancellation at Zion, and wouldn't you know it, the day before we went, we got a cancellation. And we have to also recognize that we learned we're saying Zion wrong. <laughs> right, the locals call it Zion. Zion, Zion, Zion. with a U. So yeah. it's a hard Zion. habit to break, forgive us. Yeah. We've always we're from said Georgia. Zion. We are born and raised in Georgia. Um, so. But we did get a cancellation. You were, we were at the Adventure House, yes. you found it, we booked it, yep. and we were pumped because yes, the views were incredible. Yeah. Well, we were also staying at, at a National Park Lodge at Bryce and the Grand Canyon, so you know it was cool to have another notch on your belt as far as the lodge was concerned. Mm -hmm. That was another recommendation of Corey from Finding Our Someday. He said, hey, if you can stay at a few lodges, they're pretty cool, and they are cool. I mean, it was yeah. very, very neat to wake up in Zion Canyon and just the the cliffs towering over you, oh, you know, the views are just nuts. I mean, there was a mule deer out there. I, I spent a good probably 10 minutes just sitting with this mule deer eating five feet from me. And he would just look up at me every once in a while and keep eating. I just watch him. It was very relaxing to just sit and watch him, not worry about me. And, mm -hmm. uh, but Zion Lodge was, was killer. The beds weren't terribly comfortable. I mean, you I'm know, not going to call the, it like a five-star hotel. No, no. I it's mean, a lodge. It is a lodge. Definitely. Um, but it was just fine. It was just fine. And the views yes. couldn't be beat. So right. we were very excited to be there. Um, we had dinner at the Red Rocks Cafe there at the lodge. Which is the restaurant at the lodge. It's the restaurant yes. upstairs there at the lodge. And also breakfast. So we right. visited twice. Um, it was fine. It was good. It was fine. Yeah. I'm, I think that the breakfast was very basic. I mean, yeah. it was your basic thin, thin bacon eggs, sausage. It wasn't anything crazy. Didn't knock your socks off. Right. And then I think we just got the salad bar for dinner. For dinner, we did so. soup and salad, and I think we just had that big lunch at the Iron Horse, so 
Right. We're just in for something light for dinner. Right, and, that's right. And it had just rained, but it stopped. So the staff there was nice enough to drive yes. a table outside so we could sit outside and enjoy the view. Incredible view. Maybe one of the best views ever for dinner. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, but yeah, I, would, I mean, the food is not going to knock your socks off, but the prices weren't bad. Yeah. I mean, they weren't crazy. No, I mean, they, they weren't, weren't cheap. They weren't cheap. They weren't a deal, but they weren't bad. No. All right, sorry. So the desert wreaked absolute havoc on my sinuses. <laughs> it's so dry. Like as a Georgia boy with yeah. used to 85, 90% humidity. Yeah, so yeah. sorry. I had to pause he, you were recovering. <laughs> I'm recovering, yeah. It was, it was well worth it for sure. But yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, sorry. Sorry for that little pause there. Okay. But um, yeah, we had, again, the food at the Zion Lodge is not going to knock your socks off, but it's reasonably priced and um, it is what it is. You don't have to leave to yeah, eat. The convenience. You know, it's, it's, I think it's worth it's it. Awesome. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Um, so the next morning, the, yes, we wake up in Zion. We um, had our breakfast, like we mentioned, and then mm. we hopped on the shuttle. So if you study or have been to Zion, you know, like there's a part where I don't know if it's called Canyon what? View Drive or whatever, but right. you can only take a shuttle. Once and you stay, go past the lodge, you have to use a shuttle. Yeah. So we at least could drive that far to the lodge but then we took a shuttle. So anyway, right. that morning we got up and took a shuttle to the very last stop, which I'd had a few people recommend. Right. Take it to the end and then make your way back. Um, but we just took it to the end um, and hiked. Uh, it's called Riverside Walk. Yes. Paved, very accessible. So if you have someone right. with limited mobility, um, this is great for them. It's probably the best one that I'm aware of. Easily. In Zion, well, it's probably. Paved. Well, Grand Canyon is pretty accessible, but yeah. As far as trip. within that Zion, national park. for sure. Um, yeah. And that actually leads you to the Narrows, which tons of people hike. It's probably the most famous hike right. in um, the park. But it was closed because of the snow melt and all right. of the water. So it's a lot of water we hiked still. all the way down to the end of the paved walk and back and hopped back on the shuttle and came back to the lodge and checked out. Right. But that, but the hike, that hike, to talk about that hike yeah. a little bit, um, the Riverside Walk is a great hike. It is terribly scenic. It's one mile in and one mile back out, so two miles round trip. Mm -hmm. um, you're on the river basically the entire time, but you're, it's a totally different hike going in than it is coming back out. So it's almost right. like a two, it's almost like a two mile right. loop mm -hmm. um, where you, you don't see everything twice. I mean, you go in, it looks one way and you come back out, it looks like a completely different hike. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it is a great hike. Would have loved to do the Narrows, but again, you know, especially with the kids, I, I don't think they would have even They're been able to do much of that. that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we, we just weren't ready for that. We couldn't anyway, so it really didn't matter. No, it didn't and yeah. I, I wasn't necessarily disappointed because the views are hearty killer. Yeah, it was yeah. Fun. And also, on that note, you talk about accessibility. Um, I think if you have a handicap, if you have a handicap tag or a permit, um, I think you can drive past the lodge and use the parking areas in the different shuttle stops. I know I saw one person who had a special permit, and I think that's why he had that permit, is because he, had, uh, he needed handicap access, so you wouldn't have to use the shuttle if you have a handicap need. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah. I think that's the case. Give Zion a call and make sure on that one. So anyway, we got done with Riverside Walk. Yep, checked out. Checked out. Loaded the car up, and yep. we weren't quite done with Zion yet. Well, so, that's the best thing about yeah. staying at Zion Lodge. You can park in the canyon. Right, and I yeah. was most nervous when we were planning to stay at Bumbleberry because there's so limited parking in Zion. Right. Um, I was convinced we weren't going to get a parking spot. We were going to have to park and stay in Springdale and hop their shuttle to the right. park. Anyway, it worked out great being able to park in the park. Um, so after checkout, we went back to the shuttle and uh, went down to, it's the um, the grotto is the yes. stop. And it's the Cayenta Trail. And we took that mm -hmm. up to the upper Emerald Pools. And we got to a part where there was a fork and we decided to go walk under the waterfall rather than yes. over the waterfall. So be warned, there's some stairs there. Definitely worth it, especially if it's warm because you get the waterfall kind of right, spray, spray on you. It mm -hmm. was nice. Uh, so we did that and came back. That wasn't too terribly long or difficult no. of a hike, but it was a popular hike. We passed lots of people. Right. I can't imagine it during the summer when it's it, peak season. There was sometimes that looked like the security line at airport. Well, yeah. I mean, there at the, some at the very beginning, where well, there's some switchbacks and yeah. like kind of one lane trail, holy cow, you'd have to have 10 or 12 people go one way and then wait. And then 10, it, was, it was pretty busy. So like you said, that... In the summer, that's going to be rocking and rolling, I, yeah, that, that for has sure. To be pretty crazy. But and the good thing about that hike, though, 
No, a lot of people asked if we did Angel's Landing. No, we have a seven-year-old. That would be insane. Um, and then also there was another, what was it, uh, Canyon Overlook Trail that we were going to do? We were going to do that, yep. Right. We didn't get to get, get to that yeah. one because that was another great view, but we still got that quintessential Zion shot yeah, of us did. being elevated in the valley, yeah. being able to see down the canyon. So I thought that was a great little trail, and Beckett, mm -hmm. at seven years old, handled it with ease. I mean, there was no complaints from him. Yeah, he was a trooper. And uh, he knocked it out no problem. And because you don't need to bring much. I mean, you see people with backpacks and all that, but in reality, you got a couple bottles of water, you're good. We I stopped mean, for a snack once we right. got through the waterfall, had some water, and came back. Now, at the lodge, there is a bridge. So if, once we went under the waterfall, if the bridge was not out, which it is, right. um, we would have been able to keep going and connect back there. But yes. it was out, so we turned around and went back the way Actually, we, we could have just left from the lodge. True. Yeah. So the reason that bridge is closed is I think the snow melt has, had moved it off of its footing. And so uh, they just closed it a few weeks ago. And so I don't know when that will be back in service. But as of May of 2023, uh, it's still out of service, the bridge across from the lodge. So you have to make, get, gain access to some trails via some other shuttle stops, and that's why we had to go to the ground. And it may be why it was a little more crowded, too, because possibly people were forced to go that way. That's right. That was their only option. Um, so that pretty much wrapped it up for us. I mean, right. just riding the shuttles, the views were beautiful. I don't feel like we missed out on anything with either. the kids being as small as they were Right. for this trip. So That said, I mean, I think you can definitely do Zion in one day. I think you can get most of what you're going to get from Zion. I mean, like you mentioned, we were leaving and we didn't feel like we missed out on something. Like, no. oh, I wish I'd have seen this. No. I mean, I think you can definitely get Zion in in one day. And and talking to Corey and Jesse, I'm mentioning them a lot because we had a long conversation about this. They said the same thing. I mean, you're you're not going to get every trail in, but you're going to get 90% of the gist of Zion or Zion um, in one day easily. So you know, if you if you can only have one day for Zion. Um, then it's, that's going to be more than fine. Yeah. Absolutely. So we headed out, had a late lunch at uh, Porter's, which is at the Bumbleberry Inn where we were originally going to Now stay we're in at. Springdale. So outside yeah, so we headed out the to town Springdale. outside of Zion is called Springdale. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you for that. So I went there, had lunch. And I will note, if you're looking, we found shirts and some mm -hmm. gifts in the park, but we did look through the gift shop there. Right. And they had a great selection. So... Don't lose hope if you don't find something you like in the National Park. I would recommend checking out um, the Pummelberry. little gift shop there. Lunch at Porter's. It was really good. Porter's is real good. Very good. It's, again, it's not inexpensive, but it's very, very good. But I do think the, the souvenirs at Bumbleberry were much more reasonably priced than yes. inside the park. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, a larger selection. Uh, and then we had ice cream. At, we did? Right outside well, the door. Well, you guys did. Porter. I didn't. Yeah. Well, the kids did. Yeah, they did. Right. But we had promised them that. I think we'd bribed them a little bit. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so they had earned it. I mean, they yeah. had done about five miles of hiking at they that had. point. So we so. had ice cream on the road as we drove back out of Zion. Right. The way we came in. So, you know, the big mm -hmm. long tunnel, we got to go through that twice. Yes. Um, Saw some goats. Mountain goats. What do you call them? Big horn Big horn sheep. ram. Big horn sheep. Sorry. What did I call them? You, corrected you called them goats, actually, and I corrected you. No, I just called them... <laughs> I called them goats and actually big horn sheep. So uh -huh. okay. I think I don't rams. I think the males are rams, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I know the rams are the only ones popping each other. Okay. So well, either way, the wildlife well, was interesting. Google it. I don't know. That's what we had to do. I'm sure. <laughs> All right. Um, so. Anyway, so then we drove to Bryce Canyon. It we wasn't did. that far of a drive. Very no, it's about an hour and a half. I think it's yeah. an hour and a half from Zion, mm -hmm. and um, it's uphill, so you're gaining elevation the whole time. So we've gained elevation ever since Paige, and. Um, up the Grand Staircase, if, mm -hmm. if you're unsure what that is. That's a good Google search. I'll try to remember to link it down below. But, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we drove to Bryce. And as we're driving to Bryce, we get to go through Dixie National Forest. Yes. Yeah, which is really, really cool. If you, if you get a chance to, to RV a camp at Dixie National Forest, absolutely do it because it is a very interesting yeah. landscape. We can it's see very the campsites cool. from the road. They look mm -hmm. great. They look um, great. And we got to go in these under these arches. Yep, yep. We weren't really expecting. So we're like, oh, get the camera out. So yeah. you see us coming back through the arches because right. we weren't quick enough to get it on the way. On the way, yeah. right. Um, but yeah, it, it seemed 
pretty cool. I'm glad it was cool. It took us that way, and then um, we headed to the lodge. The at lodge at Bryce King. King. Yep. And, and so at Bryce. It's late May, and there's still snow on the ground in places. Yeah, not a lot, it's, but a little bit. Yeah, little yeah. piles here and there. And um, But, yeah, it was chilly up there. I think it was low 40s one morning. And so you'll have to bring some layers even if you're there in May and June. Yeah, the elevation. Um, you probably already know that, but uh, just confirming it for you, it was the elevation change is, is definitely there. And, um, yeah, it was, and also we stayed at the lodge mm -hmm. in Bryce, and they didn't have TV, which I thought was great, but... Yeah. Brooke wasn't a fan. She's like, I well, want the kids to be able to watch something after a shower. Sometimes right. after a shower, and right. watch a little TV. So, um, but it's what it is. No TVs at Bryce. And we didn't bring electronics on this trip. No. Uh, other than mm -hmm. our cell phones, the kids had no electronics. No. So no, no Nintendo, no nothing. Yeah. So you know, we weren't too upset about having TVs in the room at night, but that one did not. Right. Um, and it was fine. I would say it was pretty similar to the Zion Lodge as far as comfort and amenities. Yes. Minus the TV that we mentioned, but it was very similar. Right. And uh, at Bryce, so we're at Bryce, we're at the lodge, uh, there's a restaurant there. Mm -hmm. And um, get there early, put your name down early, yes. because it is the only place to eat for a good ways around, really. Yeah, until you I mean, get I, I guess you could go back out of the, out of town. Where that Ruby's in. Is. Right, right, right. Yeah. But um, still it, it's still busy. I mean, I think we had an hour and a half wait. Mm -hmm. And it was every bit of hour 15, I think, we waited. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so um, the food there, um, I would say it's seven again, seven seven and a half out of ten. Yeah, nothing okay. crazy, nothing yeah. nothing that's going to knock your socks off. It's 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 I would say probably expensive, but um, you know, it, would it, do you think if we had it to do over again, we'd just leave the park and go back no, into it, town? No, I think the convenience of it. Right. Just yeah. being able to walk to, walk to dinner to it, and yeah. walk back to your room was. Yeah, I think so too. Nice. And then Bryce Lodge is right. It's uh, probably a football field, I would say, from the canyon. Or the, it's not a canyon, actually. It's an amphitheater. amphitheater. But, right. um, but so the amphitheater is only about a football field away. And so that made it easy to wake up the next morning and watch the sunrise. So Corey's the only one that made the sunrise. I was the only one that made the sunrise. But, but I'm um, glad I did. Here's some pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so there was that. And then right. we all got going we a did. little later. And um, then we, we hiked down into the yeah, we hiked amphitheater a little, a little bit. Saw some hoodoos and yeah. got some good. But Bryce, again, is definitely, I mean, I wouldn't plan to spend more than one day at Bryce. There's just, uh, the amphitheater is only so big, and um, there's not a ton to do there. I mean, once you've seen the uh, two, three, four views, that's about it. I mean, it, and it's awesome. It's great. It's really cool. But uh, there's not much more than that. I mean, and again, another thing from Corey and Jesse, he said the same thing. He's like, you can do Bryce in half a day. Mm -hmm. And absolutely, you can do it in half a day. You could probably do Bryce in a couple of hours, I yeah, would say. Yeah, For sure. Um, there's some parts we didn't drive to. But, right. Um, if you had the choice, I would I would Zion. plan on spending more time in Zion for sure than Bryce. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So there's a lot more to do and see in Zion than there is in Bryce. Um, as far as scenery goes, that's subjective. I actually like Zion better. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so much Bryce more majestic. Bryce is really cool. It is but cool. That's the word I kept using for Zion. It was just so majestic and just incredible. I think Bryce is, I would consider Bryce interesting. Mm -hmm. Like, how did this happen? It's crazy to think how these little hoodoos yeah. formed. Yeah. But uh, but Zion's just like out of a science fiction. I mean, not in science fiction, but like a King Kong movie or something. And it's just, yeah. it's crazy. It's so, so, yeah, I would definitely, senior, if you had to choose, now here, here's a good one. Don't want to make anyone mad, but if you had to choose one over the other, I'm going to choose Zion. I agree. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think the kids would agree with that too. I agree. So. Um, all right, so we headed out. We did. We headed out, and then we went to Ruby's Inn, which mm -hmm. is like a little gift shop. It's everything, right? right. Restaurant, restaurant, hotel, grocery store, dish. yeah, everything. everything. It's worth a stop. I think mm -hmm. you can also stay there. That was before we got reservations at the lodge. Um, isn't it that was one Western? of the. I think it's the Best Western okay. Rubies Inn. Yeah, um, that's one of the popular options in the little town. What's the little town outside of there called? I cannot. I've drawn that. a blank. I'll put it up on the screen right here. Yeah. But um, but yeah, so Rubies Inn. It, it's good. It'll be good. You won't be disappointed with it. But if you can stay in the lodge, definitely stay in the lodge. And then one more thing before we get to the next video. Well, this little, and the thing is, oh, we headed out. I don't know. It was before lunch because we just knew we had a long drive to Grand Canyon. Yes. 
We had five and a half hours to Grand Canyon. So we looked to find some stops along the way to break that up. So Stretch our legs a little we bit. found um, Belly of the Dragon. We did. On our way into Kanab. That was really cool. It was. And yeah. it's right on the side of the road. So yeah. park, walk. I mean, it's hop, skip, and a jump. 100% recommended. You have to go down, what was it, five, seven feet down. So if you have limited mobility, that would be difficult. I would say five feet. Okay. Yeah. So five feet down. Corey helped us down into this I don't know, little cave that goes yeah, under the road. Yeah, it's just a straight cave. Yeah. Um, but it was You're neat. seeing pictures of it. Yeah. So it was pretty neat. Definitely worth a quick stop if you want to get out and stretch your legs. Yes. And then we also stopped just a little farther down the road. At, Back in Kanab, basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Moqui. Did I Moqui. That Moqui Cave. Yes. So there's two different things there. So there's the Moqui Caves, which are like these sand caves up on the side of a cliff. Mm -hmm. And there's the Moqui Cave Museum, Museum yeah. which is what we did. Um, we didn't have time or we didn't make, take the time to go hike up onto the, the sandstone or the sand caves. I think they would be awesome. Yeah, the pictures I've, I've seen saw lots of cool really pictures cool. from that, mm -hmm. but they're two different things. So, uh, and even when we went into the museum, the reason we went into the museum was to show the kids dinosaur tracks. Mm -hmm. So this guy that he bought this, this is a crazy story. So he bought this cave. So it's his cave now. And apparently when they shot Western movies, over in Kanab back in the day, back in the 50s, the big complaint from a lot of the actors was, hey, there's nowhere to cool off here and there's nowhere to get a beer. So this guy literally turned this cave into a bar and dance hall because it never gets more than 65 degrees in there, no matter what the temperature is outside. And, um, and now you can get a beer. So yeah, apparently some very, I mean, John Wayne, Ronald Reagan, supposedly, you know, who knows Le if it's true. Legend but, has it. Yeah, legend <laughs> has it that those guys bellied up at the bar at this Moqui Cave place. And uh, the, the guy that owned it was actually also an archaeologist. This yeah. guy had to be an so, interesting bird. I can And um, so he, back in the day, he, you were allowed to, he had dinosaur tracks. You find dinosaur tracks, well, back then you could cut them out of the sandstone and take them with you. He, obviously, you couldn't do that now. But, um, so he had several dinosaur tracks in there. He had all kinds of Indian neat, relics. Really neat fossils. Too. Yeah, really neat fossils. Were, fluorescent, yeah. uh, um, what, what, what's element, uh, what are the words I'm looking for? Minerals. Mm -hmm. The fluorescent mineral museum mm -hmm. where there's black lights on these yeah, minerals. Yeah, it was really, glowing. I mean, just really neat. A great, interesting stop. Yes. We were there, what, 30 minutes? A little bit of a tourist trap, too. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But yeah. The kids loved it. The kids yeah. loved it, yeah. And I think you got to pay to get in. I think it's like... Ten bucks, bucks for adults. Yeah, yeah it's nothing uh, crazy. It wasn't big but uh, it was it's really for us. It was a stop to stretch our legs. But I we I would say again along the the, the terms of this video, I would recommend it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would yeah. recommend it. So put that um, one on your list. So Grand Canyon would be the next thing we talk yeah. about, and we're not going to talk about it in this video. Right. So right. Um, really, we're going to leave off where we're driving that five hours yep. to the Grand Canyon. We went a different route than we had expected. Yes. And um, purposefully. Yeah. So we'll talk about that next video. Yeah, we'll talk about that next video. Guys, I hope this was useful. I will put a list of all of the points and recommendations that we have made on this number one of two video series down in the description box below. So you don't have to search for it in the video if you don't want to watch our, you know, listen to us blabber. Um, yeah, but there's a list of recommendations, uh, se se several links down in the description box as well. Uh, we didn't partner with anybody on this trip. This was totally organic. This was... Um, any of the places we stayed, we just booked it just like anyone else would. And um, I, I just hope that this video is useful to you guys who are also looking to plan a trip. And maybe um, maybe some of these things is something you can put into your own itinerary. Good? That sounds great. We'll see you next time. Yep, sounds good. Grand Canyon, Sedona, a lot of fun stuff coming up in the next one. See ya.